we talk about the early days of flight, we usually think of such pioneers as the Wright brothers, Louis Blairot, and Ben Curtis. But how many people know or have heard of a man named Tom Gunn? Tom Gunn, whose real name was Tan Jin, was born in San Francisco to Chinese immigrant parents. Early on, Tom Gunn learned to be a well-rounded person. However, he also had an interest in doing other things such as becoming a pilot. In fact, he was one of the first 100 people in the United States to get a pilot license. A nephew of Tom Gunn, Curtis Joe, recalls some of the stories his mother told him. The stories I understand was that she, he learned to fly in Los Angeles and possibly San Diego. And it was, uh, it was not the Wright brothers, it was Glenn Curtis that he learned to fly with. And uh, there was a good friend of his that became well known, a man by the name of Arthur Lim. And he was a classmate or a schoolmate of my uncle. Because, you know, my, of course, my uncle was born in San Francisco, went to public schools there. And uh, I never heard the story about how he got interested, but obviously he was pretty talented to do, have done what he did. Although San Francisco was his home base, his flying skills took him to many places, often traveling around the United States and later Asia and the Pacific. Like many aviators at the time, to make a living, he did exhibitions and air shows. As a barnstormer, his reputation grew with one newspaper in the Philippines, billing him as the nerviest Chinaman in the world. It was in Hawaii that he demonstrated that flying passengers for a fee might be a good business. It was on October of 1913 that a Honolulu resident by the name of Mrs. Newman paid Tom Gunn $25 to take a 15-minute ride in the skies over Oahu. This might be seen as the beginning of air tourism in the islands. He also experimented with airmail service, flying letters and parcels between the islands of Maui, Kauai, and Oahu. When he was in the Philippines, he introduced this new way of transporting mail, along with other demonstrations of what the airplane could do. One story I remember was that he was with Sun Yat-sen, who was one of the early founders of the changes in China going on at the turn of the century. He asked Tom Gunn to help develop and head the newly formed Chinese Army Aviation Bureau. However, Sun was not the only one interested in Tom Gunn. Other groups competed for services and, unfortunately, he got caught up in the political struggles in China. It went so far as seeing a number of attempts on his life by rebel revolutionaries. These events often made it harder for him to pursue his ambitions of opening up an aviation school and increasing the development of aviation in China. I remember one story about they were being in a banquet and, you know, they had these hot towels to wipe your face with and they discovered that there was like some acid in that thing and they were trying to injure my uncle, but uh, fortunately it was discovered before it happened. He continued to fly and show how versatile the airplane could be. Unfortunately, his death-defying feats caught up with him during a demonstration in Canton in 1916, where he crashed and suffered injuries that would bother him the rest of his life. Ironically, after so many years of adventure and daredevil antics, he died in a rick mysterious rickshaw accident in 1925 at the age of 35. To honor his many accomplishments, the Pacific Aviation Museum in Hawaii made Tom Gunn the first person to be inducted into its ongoing Pacific Aviation Pioneers exhibit. His story is being told with displays of artifacts, photos, and documents gathered from his years of flying. Tom Gunn, the Chinese-American aviator, was truly a great influence, not only in America, but Asia and the Pacific as well.